This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. It's 12 o'clock, so let's begin. This is being recorded, so everyone knows it's being recorded, and we will get this out after the recording for anyone who, after the event, for anyone who can't join live. So welcome, everyone, back again for a live Q&A on Telegram with Ben Turney, and more importantly, Bulo Kasangra, who is the finance director of Pure Bond Limited, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Solar Holdings Limited. Now, the Solai Group have several minority shareholdings in both listed and unlisted junior mining stocks at different stages of development. Now, this live Q&A comes off the back of one we did with Ben Turney, the CEO of Kavango Resources, uh, a couple of weeks ago, where shareholders expressed concern about the relationship and the deal between Pure Bond and Kavango, and a call was suggested with Pure Bond to help address some of these concerns in order for shareholders to make an informed decision on the best way to proceed forward. Now, one of the biggest concerns was that Pure Bond could be acting in concert with Moxico Resources, where they hold a minority investment. Uh, this could be to the detriment of Kavango. So I'd like to welcome Bulo here today to perhaps just start us off by setting the record straight on that. And we do have, I think, about nine questions that were submitted to us that I will put to Bullo. And Ben is, of course, here as well for any questions to him. But really, this is about Bullo. So hello, Bullo. Welcome, first of all. And, and could you just start us off by perhaps giving an introduction to yourself and just setting the record straight on uh, on this Moxica resources situation? Yes, thank you, Mark, uh, for the introduction. Um, good afternoon to all the shareholders present on the call and Ben, the CEO of Kavango. Um, I am the finance director of the group company Solai Holdings Limited and Pure Bond. Uh, Pure Bond, as Mark said, is a wholly owned subsidiary of Solai Holdings Limited, a UK registered entity whose financial statements are available from the company's house in Cardiff if anybody desires to obtain them. Uh, we have several, as a group, minority shareholdings in listed and unlisted mining companies at various stages of development in its portfolio of investments. Um, as, as Mark said, uh, in the call on Friday 19th, some of the shareholders raised a concern on uh, the Moxico resources investment and possibility of somebody suggesting acting in concert. Um, we would like to reiterate, we hold a single load, a, a low single digit percentage investment in Moxico. Um, so there is no potential of any acting in concert to the detriment of Cavango. And further on, we have hands-on experience of mining operations. So we know what we are talking about in, in Cavango. Um, we have no operations whatsoever in Botswana and Zimbabwe because this was also flagged up whether we would take any special interest into Kavango. On our current and anticipated investment in Kavango, we have no desire expressed or otherwise to get on the board of Kavango now or in the near future, unless it is deemed or becomes necessary. Uh, Pure Bond wishes to reassure all the shareholders it has no more or no less information on Kavango than any other shareholder uh, or that is available in the public domain. In our opinion, it is in the interest of all shareholders, irrespective of the size of holding, to have a significant shareholder with the ability to keep the board of directors of Kavango or any listed company motivated. Furthermore, I can confirm we have no desire to take the company private nor attain day-to-day -day control for now. The ability of Kavango to attract such a sizable investment from a single shareholder is it itself a significant statement of the confidence we as Pure Bond have in Kavango's assets 
the board of management and senior management that are in London and on site collectively. Furthermore, the £6 million investment proposed would come into Cavango net of any fundraising costs of brokers, lawyers, advisors, thereby saving Cavango at least £400,000. This is a significant amount of money by any standards. And additionally, and very importantly, allows the board and senior management to focus all their time and energy on what they do and know best, that is developing the assets of the company rather than doing the multiple rounds of pitches to investors with cap in hand. The CEO of Cavango may elaborate how painful and time consuming this process of fundraising is in the current dire market scenario of fundraising. We have historically run our businesses on the fundamentals of them generating cash flow. This Cavango investment comes from surplus cash flow generated from other of our businesses, and it's not any borrowing or debt. Being a relatively small and nimble family office, we are prepared to take risks and apply our capital into opportunities where we get a gut feeling and we are patient, long-term investors. To demonstrate our patience and commitment in our investments, I'll share an example. We invest in a very early stage healthcare opportunity in the USA and have continued to top up our investment to date. And it is now only after 15 years, one five, we see the business turning the corner with 2023 being forecasted to be our first break even year. I will rest my case there. And if Mark, you feel we can go to the nine questions fielded by, um, you know, by the shareholders. Indeed. Well, thank you very much for that introduction below. Uh, I know your time is limited today to about half an hour. So we will go on to the questions and any further questions people might have at the end. So the first question I have that was sent in, what first made you aware of Cavango and what enhanced your interest to the point you decided to take a potentially controlling share of the company? Uh, we were looking at mining companies that had done some preliminary work in Botswana and those that had interesting mineral rights stroke licenses. Cavango fitted that bill, and that's when we made our first investment in 2021, about two years ago. Okay. Okay, that's fine. And what made you, what, why, what was the decision to take the potentially controlling? Well, we feel if a company like Avango, which is still relatively at its early stage, mm -hmm. goes off track, then we need to have the ability to put it back on track or to okay. motivate the board in our mind. But we don't have any other ulterior motive. Okay. Okay. So well, the second question that I have here, how do you expect the Cavango data sets, techniques and licenses to benefit Pure Bond? If Cavango fails to make a discovery, are there any other gains you expect to make? If the data sets, techniques and licenses that Cavango holds proves that the natural resources they are drilling for, then all the shareholders of Cavango, including Pure Bond, benefit equally in the ratio proportionate to their shareholding in the company. Pure Bond stands to receive no better treatment of benefits than any other shareholder. And on your second question, if it fails to make a discovery, should Cavango fail to make any discovery, then Pure Bond, like all the other shareholders will have to write down their investment and Pure Bond would have no additional gain or any other shareholder in this unfortunate event. Okay, okay, so you will suffer as everyone else yes. <laughs> potentially would. Okay, so apart from this investment, is there any uh, other support that you hope to provide Cavango? Uh, Pure Bond does not envisage extending any support to Cavango other than, it, than its purely financial investment that we are now proposing of six million pounds. Okay. Will Pure Bond 
just be financial backers of the business or will you take a role in decision making? You mentioned that you don't plan to have a board seat at the moment, but um, what changes, if any, can we expect from the management style? Well, if if uh, well, first of all, we have no desire to get onto the day to day running of Cavango mm-hmm. because we we ourselves have enough work on our plate at the moment without looking at running Cavango hands on. Uh, but one has to have the ability when you're making such a serious, uh, large investment to have the ability in case the management go AWOL or, mm-hmm. or something happens, God forbid, that you can steer it back on track. That's all. Okay, okay. Now, assuming that Kavango don't find any mineralization early on, is there an expiration budget over and above the £6 million pledged at this point? And if so, have you considered the terms? Well, yeah, and for, well, we hope Kavango f- does find the mineralization it's looking for. But in the unfortunate case, if it does not find and further funding is required to continue drilling works, Pure Bond will surely consider favorably to fund Cavango further. But absolutely on one, the results of drilling work still that date prove it makes sense to continue. And two, the prevalent market conditions. Uh, no, no, cons- uh, no terms have been contemplated to be discussed because the event has not crystallized or materialized. So, so we have not... Uh, had had the necessity to discuss any terms of further funding, but we hope okay. the six million will get us all to a happy point. <laughs> okay, well, let's hope so. It's a lot of money. Um, okay, the next question I have: Pure Bond have pitched their offer to give them a controlling stake of the company. That's fifty-two and a half percent. You could have invested fractionally less money and held, for example, um, a little bit less, maybe forty-seven point five. What was the rationale behind this? We we were on, we did our own estimation of the minimum money that Kavango would require to drill the three sites in hand in Botswana, plus an estimated budget for the new Zimbabwe acquisition of the asset, mm-hmm. and this came to six million pounds. For Purebond to make this additional sizable six million pound, it needed to know. Should it only deem necessary, it has the ability to steer Kavango onto a safe path or course. Okay. So that's how we've come up with the six, six million and resulting in a 52% shareholding. Okay. Now, you did say at the start that you don't have any plans to take Kavango private, but I have a question here. Do you consider taking any of Kavango's projects private? And what was the attraction to investing in a public company? Uh, we have no desire to to strip Kavango of any of its project and take them private. Okay. I think Kavango's strength remains to have all those three projects under its belt. Okay. Um, so, so that that question definitely, Pure Bond has no desire to do that. And the attraction of investing was not the element of it being a listed entity, but what attracted us was the underlying assets in the geography of Botswana. Okay, that makes sense. Well, the last question I have that was sent in beforehand, some of the existing shareholders would love to invest fresh capital into the company at the 1p price you're entering. Would you consider extending your offer to enable existing shareholders to manage their dilution and join in this fundraising round by means of an open offer or similar from our experience, the process of an open offer is not only time consuming, but also extremely costly to the company. Kavango needs funding sooner than later to continue with the momentum of its current drilling program on site in okay. Botswana. Any break of continuity in this drill program will only harm Kavango and in turn its shareholders. Okay. And thus, we feel we, we want to just move forward once the shareholders give the approval to invest the money. Okay. So just to sort of summarize then from your point of view, this is purely 
an investment opportunity for the company, your company, that you want to receive substantial returns on, if if possible. It's obviously not without risk, but but that's that's the crux of why you're doing this. Yes, I mean, look, uh, it's it's a very risky investment. Nobody's got the crystal ball to look into what is in the ground. Mm-hmm. We all hope that the work Cavango has done so far does indicate positive signs that there could be something interesting in the ground, but a lot of exploratory work has to be done by Ben and his team on the ground in terms of drilling. And drilling, as as we all know, is quite an expensive exercise. And uh, yes, uh, we all, I think all the shareholders in this call would like to see a 10p share price, but it will only come after Ben has proved the, the ground contains the mineralization we are looking for, not until okay. then. Okay, okay. Okay, well, thank you for that, Bulo. So um, what I'd like to do is, Ben, ben is there. Do ben, you want do you, to... Do, oh, I've got some I've echo got coming echo. through there. Ben, do you want to make a few comments and then we can see if anyone's got any questions they can either type in the group. Yeah, hi, Mark, I'm here now. So first of all, I'd just like to say, Bulo, thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, in my um, 15 years now as a as a private investor in this market, I've I've never seen an investor volunteer and step forward in this way to to state their case um, for, for making an investment in a company like this into ours. Um, we've also heard your message loud and clear as a business. Um, we've understood exactly why it is you want to take the 52% stake, as you've quite correctly um, pointed out in in today's call, you're making a significant investment into Cavango. Six million pounds is a lot of money, um, even for you know a sort of family of, of, of with you, with your wealth and your resources available to you. This is a a lot of money that's coming into the business. So we understand your motivation, and of course, you know we we also understand that it's up to us now to to deliver. And as you quite rightly say, if if we as a management team were to go rogue, um, then obviously you have in place some mechanisms both to protect your interests, but also those of other shareholders as well. Now, Mark, um, I'm obviously conscious that this has been sort of quite an an emotive topic over the last couple of weeks. Um, The way that we've set things up today is that if anybody does have any further questions, I'm I'm happy to to field any questions. But um, in terms of uh, Bullo's involvement now, we put the questions to him. He's made his case. If anybody would like any further clarification, by all means, do write to us and we can put further written questions to Bullo. But if anybody would like to ask me any questions here and now, I'm, I'm available. Okay, thank you, Ben. Well, let's see if anyone does have any questions. I did ask in the group, please just type away. Or, um, yeah, you can put your hand up and we'll uh, open the mic for you. Otherwise, as Ben says, um, we can put further questions to below written format. And I'm sure Ben will reply um, on an email. is probably the best way to do that. I did See, there were some hands up earlier. I don't know if those were by accident. Yeah, I saw some hands up right at the start. I don't see them now. Um, maybe uh, maybe people are happy with that. I don't know. Sorry. I mean, those were the nine questions that were sent in beforehand that were fielded by, um, I think, uh, I think James, who's the group admin here. So I presume that's all the questions that people had. If they're satisfied with the answers for now, then... It looks that way. So, Mark, if, okay. to wrap things up then, Mark, if I could just finish on one point. So, look, I'm, my background is as a retail investor, as many as many of you know. Um, I've worked very hard over the years, um, both as a, an investigative writer, as a shareholder activist, and now in terms of what I'm doing here in Cavango. We are investing in what is a very, very difficult market space where the odds are always stacked against the little guy. So the small people who put the smaller amounts of money in, they're the ones who typically tend to lose in this space. Now, I appreciate that Cavango, you know, over the last year, we haven't yet delivered um, the discovery, the resource, that transformational um, transformational impact, that transformational event for the company that, of course, we are all looking for. What obviously people don't see behind the scenes is how much work we put into this business and how much work goes into our projects on the ground. There's a lot of speculation from anonymous posters, both on the Telegram group, on the LSE bulletin board, 
I haven't even looked at the ADVFM board for a long time, but I can only imagine what's what's going on in there. All I'd say to those people who are listening today who are serious long-term shareholders, and I know that pretty much everybody in this group is a serious long-term shareholder, we're doing everything we can to deliver the success that we've all been dreaming of with this business. And what the Pure Bond investment represents for us is a sea change for our business. There isn't another company in London that would have this kind of financial backing and this kind of financial support. We obviously have extremely ambitious projects in Botswana that we are now just about to, well, we have actually started drilling in the KSZ, so we know that campaign is underway. We're focusing much more of our energies both on on Ditau in the KCB, and we hope in the very near future to be able to update on more definitive plans of exactly what we have in mind in Zimbabwe. But as a business, we are in the strongest position we've ever been in. We've learned so much about our projects. There's so much that we've we've discovered so far in terms of identifying new target areas and, and drill targets to, to go for in the company. What the investment from Pure Bond provides us now with is a foundation that takes us well into 2024 with a much more upgraded exploration plan where we won't have to make the kind of compromise decisions that we've had in the past because we've always had one arm eye on raising money, one eye on, on, on the market and the market reaction to everything we're doing, which has meant that we at times have had to make decisions and take shortcuts that really I don't think have been in the best interest of the projects. But with where we are now today, this level of backing that will be coming into our business, this will be our best chance of making this company a success. In terms of the participation, um, and I know that this has been one issue that's that's been a, a, a big concern for shareholders and the ability to participate in this deal, particularly for people who've participated in previous fundraisings. I've participated in all the previous fundraisings as well, so I completely understand the concerns that there are. But I think what you've heard today directly from um, Bullo and, and Pure Bond's view and their rationale for why they want to take the 52% stake in the company. What I hope you've understood from this is how or how closely aligned their interests will be with yours as we move forward. So although the dilution might feel like it's quite a big issue, if that dilution is ultimately what enables us to deliver the kind of success that I believe we can deliver as a business, I think we'll all be looking back on this and recognising that this actually is the, the, the sea change moment for the business. So I'd like to thank everybody for participating today um as always i'm available on email you can direct message me on um on twitter i'll um i'll probably be leaving the telegram group i don't think it's right for me to remain in the telegram group um, after today's session but i do make myself available to any shareholder queries and we'll of course be looking forward to providing updates on the on the current drill campaign as we as we work through the work through the gears on that so thank you all very much for joining today Bulo, thank you very much as well thank for you, joining ben. us. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, Mark, you. and your team. No and problem. Mark, thank, you well. thank you, Ben, for your time, and Bulo as well for your time, and everyone listening. Thank you very much, and we'll thank leave you. it there then. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.